hey guys and welcome back to my youtube channel i'm really glad to have you guys back here again in this tutorial i'll be showing you guys how to make this beautiful bustier blouse exactly as you can see it on your screen if this seems like something you're interested in hit on that subscribe button if you haven't and let's get right into it let's analyze the style the first thing you will notice is that this is a bustier blouse with a sweetheart neckline and then the sleeve has pleats at the armhole the back's waistline is kind of curved in and it's longer at the middle you will also notice that this is a crepe fabric and one to two yards should be enough for you to make this blouse then you also need a lining of about one and a half yard also you also be needing an interfacing to help to give more structure what i have here is a soft hair stay to draft out the pattern i already have my lines drawn out here this is my shoulder line here is my bust point i have my under bust line this is my waistline and the last point there is my hip line this is my center front where i'll be taking on my measurements from and this is my side front for the neckline coming from the center front by three inches and mark that there this is a standard measurement okay and from the same point come down by three inches using your curve connect these two points you just mark together Divide your shoulder measurement by 2 and mark that on the shoulder line. My shoulder is 17 and divided by 2 I have 8.5 so I'm just going to mark that there. From that point you're going to come down by 1 inch for your shoulder slope because the shoulder is not straight and you connect that into the neckline just like you see me doing here. To get the armhole curve you need to first of all get your chest line measurement and to do that you can come out the bust point by 2 inches or you use the chest line formula the bust divided by 6 plus 1.5. I had 8.25 so I'm just going to mark that there and I'll connect this with a straight line and label it the chest line now to get the armhole curve line you are going to divide your shoulder measurement by two and you are also going to mark that on the chest line now connect this with a straight line into the shoulder slant just like you see me doing here i didn't know my camera wasn't recording but let me show you guys exactly what i did from the shoulder slant to the chest line you are going to divide that line by two just place your tape there and fold it into two and mark the midpoint from that point you just marked you're going to come in by half inch and mark it there now on the chest line you divide your bust measurement by four and mark it there connect these points back into the shoulder slant using your curve that's exactly how i got the armhole curve mark half of your nipple to nipple measurement on the bust point the under bust the waistline and also on the hip line half of my nipple to nipple measurement is four so i'm going to mark that on the bust point on my under bust point on my waistline and then on my hip line and i'll connect all these points together with a straight line divide what you have on your shoulder line by two what i have here is 5.5 i'm just going to mark fold in my tape and mark the midpoint and i'm going to connect this with a straight line into my bust point towards the center front i'll be marking 0.75 inch from the dart line on the under bust the waistline and on the hip if you are not so busty please use 0.5 inch mark that on the under bust line the waistline and on the hip line then connect this with a straight line on the side going towards the side front i'll be coming out by 1.5 inch i'll be marking that on my under bust on the waistline and also on the hip line if you are not so busty you can use one and a quarter inch okay and i'll be connecting this with a straight line i'll be connecting these two lines with a curve from the under bust line into the bust line just like you see me doing Now to draw out our nuke neckline because the blouse we are recreating has a sweet hat neckline. Come up the chest line by 1.5 inch or 2 inches. I'm using 2 inch here so I'm just going to mark that point and rule a straight line across. Come out on both sides of your new neckline by 0.75 inch and connect that back into the bust point just like you see me doing. For the sweet hat neckline, you'll be connecting from this point into the center front. You can either stop on the chest line or a little bit below the chest line, depending on what is comfortable for you. For me, I'll be coming up my chest line by 0.5 inch and then I'll be connecting it with a curve from this point into the center front. For this other side, just make a curve from this point into the armhole. Place your curve rule as you see me doing here and just connect a curve into the armhole like this. I'll just be outlining the main lines of my pattern using my marker. Now placing all my round body measurements, on the chest line I'll divide my bust by 4 and mark it there on the chest line. 
To replace the dart, you can either take what you have in between here or what you have on the neckline. For me, I'll be using what I have on the neckline and here I have about 1.5 inch and I'll be replacing it on the chest line. On my waistline, I'll divide my waist measurements by 4 and what I have here is 8. Taking what I have in between my dart, I have 2.5 inches here and I'll be replacing that on my waistline. On the hip line, I'll also be dividing my hip measurements by 4. Mark it there. Take what I have in between the dart, which is 2.5 inches and replace it on the hip line. Now connect all these points together using your curve rule. Please watch how I'm doing mine so you know how to go about yours. For the stylish bass waistline, if you notice, it's curved in from the side into the center and not just curved like this. So this is what we'll be trying to recreate. Divide what you have on the hip line by two. I'm just going to place my tape there, fold it into two and mark the midpoint. At the side, come up the hip line by three inches and mark it there. I'll be connecting a curve from this point I just marked on the hip line into this point here. Please watch how I place my curve to know exactly how to place yours. I'll be doing a curve from this point into this other point of the hip line leaving about 0.5 inch. Above the main hip line, turn the curve over to the other side and complete the curve. Now this looks exactly like the back waist line we are recreating. Now we are done with the front pattern, I'm just marking out the parts we won't be needing and then I'll go ahead and cut this out. This is my center front which I'll be attaching to the side this way and this is my side front which I'll be attaching to the center this way. Please do not forget to take the measurement of what you have from your shoulder line to your new neckline. We'll be needing these while cutting out our sleeve. For me, I have 7.5 inches. I'll be putting these together to finish the stylish back waist line. As you can see here, the one on the center front is just straight and it's not meant to be like that. It's longer towards the middle. So I'm just going to place my curve rule this way and I'm going to curve it into the center front just like you see me doing here. And I'm just going to trim up whatever is left just like you see me doing. I'll be using this front pattern to draft out the back pattern. I'm just going to place them together like this and I'll be using my tape to put them together. Make sure not to put them on top of each other. For the back pattern, I already marked out my zipper allowance which is 2 inches. Placing my front pattern paper on the zipper allowance line, I'm just going to pin this down. I'll be tracing out the front pattern on the back pattern. Starting from this down part here, I'll trace it all the way to the side and then I'll be stopping at the armhole. Removing my front pattern, I'll be finishing off the neckline of the back pattern. I'll just be placing my curve rule there and I'll be making a curve towards the zipper allowance. I'll just be placing the front pattern on the back pattern to trace out the waistline. And then I'll be coming in by half inch on the waistline to reduce any form of bulge. Completing my neckline towards the zipper allowance, I'll just connect that into my waistline like so and I'll complete it into the hip line. Completing the down part of my back pattern paper, I'm just going to label this the back and then I'm going to go ahead and start cutting this out. Do not forget that this side we have here, we will not be needing it so I'm just going to shade that off and then cut out my pattern paper. I'll be labeling this part my zipper allowance. Now that we are done drafting out the front and the back pattern, I'll be opening up my front pattern like this using my scissor. Remember I said you shouldn't place them on top of each other so it will be easy for you to just cut through like this. I forgot to add that on my back pattern so I'll just be doing that now. I'll be connecting the waistline like this and then I'll be coming in from the zipper allowance by half of my nipple to nipple measurement which is 4. I'm just going to mark that there and come out from both sides of that point by half inch. Now I'll be connecting this into the top of my back pattern and down to the hip just like you see me doing here. Now this dart is going to help to give you a perfect fitting at the waistline. Now to cut out my fabric with my pattern paper, I already have it here on fold and I'm starting with the side front. I'll be adding 0.5 inch in allowance to this part, 0.5 inch to the top. 1.5 inch to the side of the pattern. I'm just going to mark that and connect it. Then I'll be adding 0.5 inch to the bottom part.
Next, I'll be cutting out my back pattern. I'm just going to pin that down and starting with the zipper part, I'm just going to cut this out. We won't be adding any stitching allowance here. To the upper part, we'll be adding 0.5 inch stitching allowance. To the side, starting from the hip line, I'm going to add 1.5 inch stitching allowance. And then remember that at the waist, we added 1 inch for that. But because we already cut out our pattern paper, we didn't do that on the pattern paper. So I'm just going to add the 1 inch here before marking my 1.5 inch stitching allowance. On the upper part, I'm also going to add 1.5 inch stitching allowance and connect these together. I'll cut this down part using half inch stitching allowance and then I'll cut out the side. If you notice, from the blouse we are recreating, the center front was cut into two. Now, this is totally optional. You can decide to cut it on fold. You can decide to cut it into two. So for me, I won't be cutting mine on fold and I'll be adding half inch stitching allowance all around my center front. Also make sure to notch the underbust parts on your center front and on the side front. This is going to enable you to know where the underbust starts when you are sewing this together. I have all my pieces here cut out and I already went ahead to cut out the lining also just like you can see for this back piece and I already attached the hair stitch to it. I didn't attach hair stitch to the main fabric because it already had enough weight for me so I just did it to the lining. You can decide to add to the fabric if you want to. As you can see also on the center front I cut it into two and not unfold and I also have my lining here which I ironed the haste to. The same thing to the side front. I have my fabric and I have my lining with the haste iron to it. Starting with the center front, I'm going to be joining this together. I'm just going to place this other one on it like this and I'm going to pin it down from beginning to the end and I'll stitch this down using half inch stitching allowance, okay? Then I'll be bringing in my side front and I'm just going to place this right sides facing the center front and I'll be pinning it down from beginning to the end, making sure that the part I notched as the underbust are together just like you see me doing here. I'll also be bringing in the other side of my side front and I'll be pinning it down like so. After I'm done I'm going to go to my machine and stitch this down using half inch stitching allowance on all the parts I just pinned down. After stitching it down this is what I had. I know the cup part is looking a little funny right now but it's not a problem because we've been setting our cups. As you can see the underbust is defined. Also go ahead and iron your seams open. Also, do not forget that whatever you are doing to the main fabric is what you'll be doing to the lining. For the back piece, I'll be stitching down my darts and as you can see here, I already notched my darts so it will be easier for me to stitch down on my machine. You can go ahead and do the same thing and make sure that whatever you are doing on your main fabric, also do it on your lining. After stitching down the darts on my back piece, this is what I had for both the fabric and the lining. What I'll be doing now is to attach my front piece and my back piece together and to do that I'm going to bring in the back piece and I'm going to place it right sides on the front piece just like this and what I'll be doing here is to pin down my stitching allowance. Remember that when we were adding stitching allowance I added 1.5 and because this is a crepe fabric and it's a little stretchy and I'm trying to get a very fitted top I'll be using the same 1.5 in stitching allowance to stitch this down by the sides. So I'm just going to be pinning this down and I'm going to go to my machine and stitch this down using 1.5 inch stitching allowance on both sides and I'll be doing the same thing for my lining. After stitching this down using 1.5 inch stitching allowance, you can see what I have here. I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the excess of what I have. I'll just be trimming it down a bit. So I'm going to do that on the lining and I'll be doing that on the main fabric also. I'll be turning my blouse over to the right side and I'll be giving this a really good press to bring out the shape. After giving it a good press, you can see how beautiful and structured my blouse looks. This is how yours should look like. This is what you want to achieve. Now, the next thing we'll be doing is to cut out the sleeve to attach to this blouse before finishing it off. Remember I said you should take the measurement of what you have from your shoulder to the new neckline on your pattern. But if you didn't, just place your underbust measurement on the underbust line. Mine is 15.5 and I'm just going to place that there and take it all the way upwards. And as you can see, what I have here is 7.5. And because we are cutting both front and back, I'm going to multiply that by 2 and what I have is 15. I already went ahead to cut out my sleeve and what I have at the length here is 16 because I added 1 inch for stitching allowance. And for how long I want my sleeve to be, I'm using about 11 inches here plus the stitching allowance. I also cut out a facing for my sleeve using the main fabric. 
you can use a lining if you already run out on fabric but using the main fabric is going to help to give you more structure and then you'll be stitching this down at the upper part and at the lower part of your sleeve we won't be stitching down the sides it's not necessary so make sure you do the same thing to the other side of your sleeve after stitching down my sleeve this is what i have and this is what yours should look like all you need to do is just to trim off the excess after stitching it down turn it over to the right side and give it a really good press attaching this sleeve to the blouse is actually very easy place your tape at the center front like this and mark out six inches just like you see me doing here do the same thing to the other side place your tape at the center front and mark six inches now before you place the sleeve you come in from the side seam by half inch because we don't want it to get all the way to the side seam now place your sleeve starting from this six inches here pleat it and pin it down just like you see me doing here until you get to this half inch before the side seam you'll be doing the same thing to this other side attach the sleeve at the six inches there and then you will pleat it and pin it down until you get to the half inch before the seam allowance after doing this this is what i have i'm going to go to my machine and stitch this down using half inch stitching allowance after stitching this down this is how beautiful it came out and this is what yours should look like the next thing we'll be doing now is to complete this sleeve by attaching it to the back side and we'll be doing the same thing by coming in by half inch from the side seam and we're just going to pin it down from that part and then make pleats just like you see me doing here and we'll be doing the same thing to the other side go to your stitch your machine and stitch this down using half inch stitching allowance i'm done stitching this down and this is how beautiful the sleeve came out the next thing we'll be doing now is to use the lining to finish this off but before we do that we'll have to attach our cup to the lining i have my cup here and the side you use doesn't really matter unless there's an obvious very curvy part we just make sure it's facing your boss now what you're going to do is to place it and make sure that it's touching the center front make sure to give half inch stitching allowance on top and also the down part is touching the under boss. now i'm going to go ahead and pin this down at the center front pin this down and the under boss, and then pin it down at the other side of the cup for this other side i'm also going to place it and make sure it stays touching the center front i'll pin it down there pin it down at the side and other sides of the cup now i'm going to go to my machine and stitch down my cup all the way around after stitching my cup down this is what it looks like and this is how it looks from the inside now to attach the lining and the main blouse together make sure that your sleeve are inside like this and then go ahead and place your lining on top of your main fabric right sides facing each other make sure that the midpoints are together like this and go ahead and pin it down all the way around just like you see me doing here after pinning this down you'll be stitching this down using half inch stitching allowance now the next part you'll be stitching down is the down part i'm just going to pin it down all the way around just like you see me doing here and i'm going to stitch this down using half inch stitching allowance on the side this side i'm going to pin it down and stitch it down all the way using half inch stitching allowance to this other side i'm just going to mark out a point because i can't stitch this down all the way through i have to leave a space where i'll use to turn out my blouse after stitching it down i'll just pin down this other part and stitch it down using half inch stitching allowance after stitching this down this is what i have i'm just going to go ahead and trim out the excesses i have just like you see me doing here so that when i turn it over and iron it out it's not bulging at any point okay now i'm going to turn this over through the space i left here and after turning it over as you can see here this is what i have now before i iron this out i'm just going to attach my pepper gum in between the cup and the main fabric just so this sits perfectly just like you see me doing here just put the hemming gum and iron this out now i'm going to give the rest of my blouse a very good press after giving it a very good press this is how beautiful it came out now i'm going to turn this over to the back and as you can see this other side is still open what you'll be doing here is just to top stitch i'm just going to fold that in and give it a top stitch okay now you you just insert your zipper after doing that i'll be starting my zipper using 1.5 inch stitching allowance go ahead and use the stitching or the zipper allowance you use for your zipper after doing that this is how beautiful my blouse came out and also try to use a zipper that opens all the way down just like this so easier wearing that's it for this blouse we have come to the end of this tutorial i'll see you guys in my next tutorial